Urban legends in gaming are almost as old as the medium itself. If you finish Metroid in less than half an hour, Samus will be naked. If you enter the right code in Tomb Raider 1, Lara Croft will be naked. If you leap over the flagpole in Super Mario Bros., Mario will be naked. That's a, a massive lie. All of these are, in fact, and I want you to remember that as we explore this list. Here we've got a collection of fan theories, creepy pastas, and secret unlockables, only some of which are based entirely on fact. So hey, see if you can guess which ones are true, eh? That'll be fun. That's also a massive lie. I'm Peter from WhatCulture.com, and here are eight spooky gaming urban legends that will give you nightmares. Number eight, Herobrine. He Herobrine. It People pronounce it differently, okay? As if a procedurally generated game world that's literally bigger than the surface area of planet Earth doesn't have enough content as it is, rumours began circulating among Minecraft players in 2010 regarding a rather queer-looking fellow who was allegedly popping up in people's single-player worlds and messing around with the terrain. Hera, 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 Herobrine, Herobrine, we'll, we'll stick with Herobrine, was the name given to this spooky intruder who looked much like Steve, the default game avatar, though with totally white eyes. In fact, it's a wonder why he wasn't just walking around bumping into stuff. Popularized by a couple of viral forum posts and the now infamous Brocraft livestream, after a fleeting glimpse of the mysterious character, players would then reportedly find odd artificial structures in their worlds, such as networks of 2x2 two two underground tunnels, giant sand pyramids in the ocean, and trees with all their leaves trimmed off. What's freakier though, if you're into this sort of thing, is the idea that what we're dealing with here is the ghost of the late brother of Minecraft creator, Notch. Spooky. Notch doesn't actually have a brother, he's never had a brother, and this is all just... I I'm sorry, it's utter fiction. This, is this isn't true. Number seven, Pokemon's Lavender Town music killed people. For God's sake, who, who actually wrote... Th th video game music cannot kill a person, it, it can't be done. Look, let let's have a listen, okay? Okay, never mind, I'm, I'm already dead. Okay, there's no denying that this giant 8-bit cat climbing a vertical chalkboard sounding track immediately sets you on edge. The original Japanese release of Pokemon came with this sinister score that played every time you wandered through the purple dust land of Lavender Town, although it also came with reports that children who listened to it were developing horrendous illnesses and occasionally committing suicide. Rated E for everyone! Whether there was genuinely a spike in Japanese eight-year-olds topping themselves following the game's release remains to be substantiated, but that's not stopped a whole community of internet users staunchly deciding that the phrase, gotta catch them all, actually referred to harrowing, child-killing, incurable terminal illnesses. Sounds like poppycock, no doubt, but interestingly, subsequent releases outside the region had the tune get switched out for an alternative track. What? Number six, Kill Switch. Kill Switch, according to legend, is a 1989 Russian 2D platformer survival horror game developed by the Carvina Corporation. Playing as either a girl called Porto or a demon named Gast, who's totally invisible and therefore totally unplayable, Soviet gamers would traverse a dark, crumbling coal mine, encountering obstacles and enemies rendered in disturbing low quality. Porto, who starts the game waking up deep in the mine with raw wounds in her elbows, discovers that before its closure, the mine had been producing a very low output, and as such, the workers had suffered frequent quote-unquote inspections. Portrayed by pixelated yet horrifying graphics, an inspection essentially entailed men in red coats turning up and punishing slow workers by inserting knives into their joints. There's more stuff about the miners unearthing demons deep underground which then possess the mining equipment and inadvertently grind up the workers, standard family viewing, but perhaps most disturbingly of all is the tale of a mint copy of the game appearing on eBay in 2005 and selling for $733,000 to a man named Yamamoto Ryuchi. The buyer claimed he was going to document his playthrough on YouTube, but only ended up posting a single video of him staring at his computer screen, weeping uncontrollably. Number five, Squall is dead. Have you been injured in an accident that wasn't your fault? Damien fell off a ladder while cleaning windows. Maureen tripped on a paving stone while shopping for prunes at the precinct. Squall got stabbed through the abdomen by a four foot shard of ethereal ice and fell off a carnival float. But thanks to the National Accident Helpline, he woke up 
without a scratch on him. Literally, he, he wakes up, looks down at himself and says, no wound. No one ever mentions the accident or lack of injury for the rest of the game, and the tone of the narrative shifts at this point from being vaguely realistic to more of a fantastical fairy tale kind of thing, all capped off by a montage of images at the end, which some people believe is his life flashing before his eyes. Essentially, theorists claim that Squall didn't survive this blatantly unsurvivable incident, and the rest of the game plays out as little more than the delirium of a dying man. This is either genius game writing, or someone just looking too far between the lines. You decide. Number 4, 80's Blaster Polybius was a government experiment. Over time, this little gem of a tale has gone from weird to all-out frog box crazy, but it's still a real humdinger, and if I didn't include it, then the comments section would probably fold in on itself and die of Lavender Town Syndrome. So, it's 1981 in Portland, Oregon, and across many different towns and suburbs, this new arcade game, Polybius, appears almost overnight. It looks to essentially play like asteroids, but it reportedly has all the control of a horse-drawn washing machine and sounded even worse. However, the really strange thing was that teens were totally obsessed, despite not only the game's poor quality, but also the many related reports of illnesses that started cropping up. Players would suffer with everything from headaches and nausea to nightmares, insomnia and amnesia, eventually succumbing to suicide in certain cases. In addition, the only people that reportedly tended to the machines at the time were figures dressed in black suits who seemed to turn up every so often and extract data from the cabinet's internals. Some stories name the game's developers as Zinners Lerschen, which translates from German as sensory deprivation, except it totally doesn't, that's all part of the story. I'm not exactly fluent, but I've taken enough holidays at my Uncle Heinrich's house in Metman to know that while the root words are sort of there, it's an imperative verb at best or a grammatical car crash at worst. But could someone German confirm that for me in the comments, please? Because Heinrich doesn't have a mobile. Number 3, the Sonic CD Wallpaper. Sonic the Hedgehog is a speedy little mammal who eats hula hoops and always finishes first. A harmless character from a harmless franchise, right? Um, I'm gonna say no, and I'm not even talking about the unofficial nightmare that was Sonic Dreams Collection. No, one of Sonic's creepiest moments began life as a rumour that circulated after the release of Sonic CD. Supposedly entering a certain cheat code and then inputting a specific password allowed you to while away the hours sitting and looking at this rather harrowing picture. A real collie wobbling wallpaper image of some kind of human Sonic, accompanied by Japanese text that roughly translates as fun is infinite with Sega Enterprises, Majin. Wonderful. Good. Brilliant. Good. Good. Number 2, Fallout 3 predicted the future. On Fallout 3, aside from a few scattered short-range broadcasts, you have a choice of two major radio stations. Galaxy News Radio, hosted by 3Dog, and, and the other one, hosted, hosted by... Uh, but the internet, which is always correct and never makes up anything ever, states that the most interesting signal you can pick up on your Pip-Boy is indeed one of the more innocuous broadcasts. Namely, one that just constantly sends out Morse code. Morse code that says things like, accident in the gulf, several dead, oil spill apparently averted, preceded by the numbers 945 for 20 2010, which, give or take 10 minutes, is the very date and time of the explosion aboard the Deepwater Horizon in the Gulf of Mexico, an event that took place two years after the game had been released. On top of that, there's even reportedly some code that says 12 5 5 28 2010 what you talking about, which exactly corresponds with the date and time of death of the late Gary Coleman, who repeatedly used such a catchphrase in his 10 years on different strokes. Again, this was an event that took place after the game was published, and therefore couldn't possibly have been put in there unless someone at Bethesda is either predicting the future or causing major fires and explosions aboard oil rigs in the Gulf of Mexico and killing slightly washed up. TV show stars. Which is more likely? And number one, Berserk's Evil Otto. So, time for the big reveal. Only one of these entries was outright true, and as I'm sure many of you will know, it was the Sonic CD wallpaper. Creepy, but you can all rest easy tonight. There are no games out there giving players amnesia, playing host to ghostly brothers, or killing teens. Except Berserk. Berserk literally killed two teens. Here we go.
This arcade title was a simple early era puzzle game where the player would navigate this little stick figure through a dark maze without touching the walls or bumping into enemies. But every so often, they were joined by the game's seemingly innocent looking antagonist, Evil Otto. The game had a mind numbing 64,000 randomly generated mazes to play with, and the spot on its top 10 high score list was much coveted by keen arcade goers. In January 1981, Jeff Daly, one such goer, played a long stint of Berserk intent on getting one of the high scores. Getting a game over after accruing 16,660 points, he managed to make the scoreboard, but then suddenly died of a heart attack moments after he stepped away from the game. He was 19 years old. In October 1982, Peter Bukowski also tried his hand at hitting the Berserk scoreboard and did indeed get into the top 10 not once, but twice within 15 minutes. Unbelievably though, only moments later, the 18-year-old also collapsed and died of a heart attack. It's astonishing, if not a little troubling, to think how two young people could die in such similar, seemingly harmless circumstances. Evil Otto literally kills teens. And that's our list. Are you scared yet? So what did I miss? If you think you know something that'll keep me up at night more than the thought of Jules moving up to Newcastle and working full time at What Culture Towers in February, oh God, then post it in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe and you can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Peter from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.